In this video, we will look at a seemingly simple concept which has seen very little use in organic synthesis. Namely, the combination of two chiral synthons in order to make a 1 2 system. 1 2 systems, which have two functional groups on neighboring carbon atoms, are quite common motifs, and a common way to synthesize them is by oxidation of olefins. So, let's see how this would work for such a simple dibutyl glycol derivative. If you look for a bis-hydroxylation of the corresponding olefin on SciFinder, you will find a variation of the Sharpless method for making the diol, which could then, for example, be oxidized to an alpha-hydroxyl ketone. And now you have two easily distinguishable functional groups, as well as a good Falcon N handle for controlling the red stereocenter. However, this only works since there is no need to distinguish between the two hydroxyl groups during the oxidation, which is due to the C2 symmetry of our diol. As soon as you introduce some kind of difference in the two alkyl chains, you are facing a regioselectivity problem. And if the difference is very little, or so far away that it has no effect on the oxidation, we have a serious problem with this strategy. And this fundamental problem also remains if you do a different oxidation, such as an epoxidation or an amino hydroxylation. So, is there a different method? Let's pretend we just heard about retrosynthesis and the disconnection approach and apply it to this problem. If we cut between the two highlighted carbon atoms, we get a chiral D1 and a chiral A1 synthon. So are there any reagents that would fit this bill? Well, the Matteson homologation delivers a chiral alpha haloboronic ester which can be reacted with a donor nucleophile and after oxidation you get an alcohol. So, these alpha haloboronic esters can be considered chiral A1 reagents. But are there any chiral D1 reagents? What we would need would be a chiral carb anion. And indeed, in the late 80s, Matteson must have thought in a similar manner as he prepared a chiral carb anion from a boronic ester by homologation, substitution with a trimethyl tin anion, oxidation, mom protection, and finally a tin lithium exchange. And this chiral carb anion is reacted successfully with an alpha haloboronic ester. So, Matteson already showed that the principle is sound. But is there maybe a quicker way for preparing this chiral carb anion? Hopper showed us that you can deprotonate carbamates in an enhancer selective manner when you're using a combination of s and spartine. This gives you a chiral carb anion directly which can then be reacted with numerous electrophiles. So, could one of these electrophiles be an alpha haloboronic ester? A few years ago, we had tried this with a racemic T-meter complex and racemic pinacolboronic esters. There we saw that the product had a strong tendency to undergo elimination. And just around this time, Blakemore published a quite similar reaction as a key to the preparation of tri-substituted olefins. But while the electron-rich carbamates were highly prone to Zyn elimination, the less electron-rich triisopropyl benzoates, first introduced by Beek, produced moderately stable products. Actually, you can do some nice shenanigans with those products, as heating initiates Zyn elimination of the treo isomer while leaving the sterically hindered erythro isomer intact. Afterwards, the latter can be persuaded to undergo anti-elimination after addition of fluoride, so that both diastereomers give you the cell alkene. While all of that is quite nifty, let's be honest, it won't replace the Wittig reaction. So let's go back to topic and see if we can use these triisopropyl benzoates as DA1 reagents for our synthetic plan. To make it a bit easier in the following slides, I will use OTIP as a shorthand for triisopropyl benzoates. When we used spartine for the lithiation and this dicyclohexyl ethane diol boronic ester, or short ditched boronic ester, we found that the reaction was somewhat capricious. And only after some serious optimization, we got the desired product by assisting the reaction with some zinc chloride and oxidating the boronate with H2O2. And while the yield was somewhat disappointing, the diastereofidelity was quite all right. So we try to make the other diastereomer by using this pinane diol boronic ester, in which the alpha stereocenter is inverted. 
This gave us the other diastereomere, and while the yield looks a bit better here, it should be stressed that the reaction remained quite capricious. To simplify the coupling protocol and remove the spartine ligand from the coupling reaction, we stored the carb anion as a stannine. This is a quite well known method and it allows you to release the carb anion again just by tin lithium exchange. Based on that, we tried several substrates and saw that the yields and the DR values remained moderate for a certain class of alpha haloboronates, while much better yields and DR values were obtained for another. The key difference was the carbon atom in the beta position. While the top systems had a secondary carbon atom in this position, the bottom system had a tertiary carbon atom. And this also remained true when a less bulky chiral carb anion was used. So what could be the explanation of this trend? Let's have a look at the likely mechanism of this reaction. From the work of the Agarwal group, we know that lithiate benzoates, like the ones we used, form 8 complexes. In the Agarwal homologation, 1-2 migration of the blue carbon atom would occur in order to insert the green carbon atom into the carbon boron bond. However, since bromide is a far better leaving group, 1-2 migration of the green carbon atom is likely to be much faster, which is good, because this gives us the product that we want. Alpha bromoboronates could also be deprotonated in alpha position. This would lead to the definite destruction of our donor component. And we observed the formation of the protonated benzoate even when the donor was generated by tin lithium exchange. But the acceptor component would suffer as well, as on the one hand further decomposition beckons and even reprotonation would lead to epimerization and thus a loss of diastereofidelity. Considering these two competing mechanisms, it stands to reason that some steric bulk in the beta position is quite useful as it suppresses this undesired side reaction. And knowing this opens up an interesting opportunity when you think about homologation chemistry. If you do a normal Mattison homologation and subsequent substitution with a Grignard molecule, you get exactly the type of precursor that is good for our convergent coupling. So another homologation, substitution with an appropriate donor and oxidation of the boronate will give you either the erythro or the trio product in quite good yields. And for the top three cases, perfect diastereofidelity. And these three top examples are particularly useful. Not only because the differentially masked trials we made here represent a fragment present in an important class of biologically active macrolectones, but also because a classic Mattison route to a comparable building block would be quite challenging. While the first step would be the same as the one we used, a second homologation and substitution with an alkoxide would require a change of chiral director in order to give you the correct relative configuration. And another homologation followed by substitution with methyl Grignard and oxidation would require us to go back to the original chiral auxiliary. So this type of coupling is a great way to terminate a sequence of medicine reactions in order to generate a differentially protected dial with the configuration you desire. To get to the right diastereomere, you can just remember a simple heuristic. Same sign on the chiral source, same orientation in the Fischer projection. This means that a plus spartine derived carb anion and a plus pinane diol derived alpha haloboronate will give you an erythroglyco while the combination with a minus pinane diol derived boronate leads to the treoglyco. So, by extension, a minus spartine derived cap anion should deliver the enantiomeric erythroglycol with a minus pinane diol derived boronate and the enantiomeric treoglycol with the plus pinane diol derived boronate. But don't forget, to get good yields, you should have some bulk in the beta position, which makes this method an ideal ending for a sequence of Mattison homologations. And with this simple take-home message, I would like to conclude our presentation by thanking the DFG for funding this project. If you want to learn more about this chemistry, you can find the link to the article in the video description. 
Thanks to a deal between the University of Duisburg in Essen and Wiley, you can access it completely free of charge. If you want to learn more about some strategic ways for controlling the relative configuration of glycols, have a look at the video tutorial for our boronate-based carbohydrate synthesis. If our short digression into boron-based olefination chemistry tickled your fancy, check out the video on the right, where you can find a video abstract to our review on this type of reaction.